Welcome to a quick overview of DNSSEC. My name is Daniel L. Benway. I'm a Systems and Network Administrator Engineer. My LinkedIn blog and Twitter information is up on your screen if you'd like to contact me, and if you do, I'm going to ask that it be through my blog. Although I use YouTube to post my videos, I prefer to handle everything else through my blog. This video is freeware and is made in the spirit of open source. You may distribute unchanged copies of it freely to anyone at any time. Care has been taken to cite contributing sources and individuals. Please do the same. If you find errors herein, please comment on them and or contact me so that we may all help the community. Also, please be sure to keep an eye on this video's revision and history record to make sure you have the most up-to-date version of this tutorial. I sometimes make revisions and then repost. Let's start with an introduction to DNSSEC. DNSSEC is not yet widely understood, much less implemented. And just like HTTPS, it will become commonplace and then eventually required. There is already a clear and present need to use it. Who needs it most urgently? Domains zones that handle personal, financial, or medical information, domain zones that handle valuable proprietary information, and domain zones that are at high risk for malicious activity, vandalism, defacement, etc. Next, let's look at the background and history of DNSSEC. In 1990, Dr. Stephen M. Bellavin discovered DNS security flaws. He's currently the chief technologist for the FTC, as well as a computer science professor at Columbia University, and previously a fellow at AT&T Bell Labs and active in the IETF, IAB, and IESG. In 1995, Dr. Bellavin published his paper on the security flaws he discovered. And in 1997, the IETF published an initial RFC to address those vulnerabilities. In 1999, they published a revised RFC which was believed to be fully workable. It wasn't. In 2005, they created DNSSEC Biz, nowadays just called DNSSEC, based on RFCs 4033 to 4035, which scaled properly to the enormous network we call the Internet. Special shout out to Al Gore. In 2010, the ICANN published the signed root zone, making DNSSEC fully usable. Now let's go over some digital signature terminology that we'll be using throughout this tutorial. Asymmetric key cryptography, otherwise known as public key cryptography, is an encryption system which uses two separate keys, one made public and the other kept private, either of which can be used to encrypt data, while only the other one can be used to decrypt it. A hash function is a one-way mathematical function that processes information of arbitrary length to produce a different fixed-length result, called a digest, that is almost always unique to the original input information. It's a non-reversible, possibly many-to-one, relationship. And digest is the output of a hash function. How do digital signatures work? Arnold writes a document, which he then hashes into a digest and encrypts using his private key. That digest, encrypted by Arnold's private key, is also known as a digital signature. Arnold then sends the original document and the digital signature to Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee takes that document and hashes it into a digest, and then she takes the digital signature from Arnold and decrypts it using his public key to get a resulting digest. If those two clear text digests match, then Jamie Lee knows two things. First, the document was signed with Arnold's private key, so she knows it was from him, and secondly, that its contents have not been altered. Some DNS terminology. A DNS domain zone is a section of the DNS namespace, for example, www.daniellbenway.net dot, and that trailing dot is not a typo. That's the server named www in the Daniel L. Benway domain zone, which is in the net domain zone, which is in the root domain zone. An iterative DNS query is a request to a DNS server, give me whatever help you can, but ask no one else whereas a recursive DNS query is a request to a DNS server, give me what I need, and ask everyone you want. Why is the difference between an iterative and recursive DNS query important? It's because iterative queries are faster and put less overhead on the targeted server. 
How DNS normally works. Step 1. The client sends a recursive query to its local recursive caching DNS server for www.dlb.net. Step 2. The recursive caching DNS server sends an iterative query to a root server for www.dlb.net. Step 3. The root server responds with a referral to the NetZone's name servers. Step 4. The recursive caching DNS server sends an iterative query to a net server for www.dlb.net. Step 5. The net server responds with a referral to the DLB zone's name servers. Step 6. The recursive caching DNS server sends an iterative query to a DLB server for www.dlb.net. Step 7. The DLB server responds with the IP address for www.dlb.net. Step 8. The recursive caching DNS server responds to the original client with the IP address of www.dlb.net. And finally, step 9. The client interacts with the web server www.dlb.net. How does DNS work when it's been hacked? Steps 1 through 6 are exactly like what we saw in the previous diagram. But with step 7, we see that the evil DNS server responds with the evil IP address for www.dlb.net, and in so doing, poisons the cache on the recursive caching DNS server with the evil entry. In step 8, we see that the recursive caching DNS server responds to the original client with the evil IP address of www.dlb.net. And finally, in step 9, we see that the client interacts with the evil web server, which will either respond directly or perform a man-in-the-middle operation by passing and observing, or even altering, traffic to and or from the legitimate web server. Let's go over some DNSSEC terminology. A fingerprint is the hash digest of a public key. Private key we've discussed, public key we've discussed. A key signing key is used to sign or verify a domain's zone's keys. A zone signing key is used to sign or verify a domain's zone's non-key records. And trust. That means to accept the validity and truthfulness of an entity with no need to further validate. For example, when I buy a book from Amazon, I don't trust Amazon or its certificate. So I validate Amazon's certificate using the public key of whichever trusted provider signed that certificate, probably VeriSign Symantec, Komodo, GoDaddy, etc. DNSSEC Record Terminology A resource record set is a set of records with the same type and from the same domain zone. A resource record signature is a record containing a resource record set's digital signature. And a delegation of signing is a record containing the hash digest of a child domain's zone's public key signing key, which is the fingerprint of a child's public key signing key. Now we'll look at how DNSSEC actually works. First, the client sends a recursive query to its local recursive caching DNS server for www.dlb.net. Now notice that the recursive caching DNS server already has a copy of the root public key signing key on it. It got that key from means other than the DNS protocol. For example, it was included with the operating system. In the second step, the recursive caching DNS server sends an iterative query to a root server for www.dlb.net. In the third step, the root DNS server sends five things. It sends a non-secured referral for the authoritative name servers for the net zone. It sends an RR set of DNS key records for the root zone, made up of the root zone's public zone signing key and public key signing key. It sends an RR sig of the DNS key RR set, signed using the root zone's private key signing key. It sends a DS record for the net zone, which is the hash digest fingerprint of the net zone's public key signing key. And it sends an RR sig of the DS record, signed using the root zone's private zone signing key. In the fourth step, the recursive caching DNS server does three things. 
It verifies the root zone's DNS key RRset by successfully decrypting the RRset's RRSIG using the root zone's public key signing key. It verifies the root zone's DS record for the net zone by successfully decrypting the record's RRSIG using the root zone's public zone signing key. And it verifies the root zone by comparing its copy of the root public key signing key against that provided to it by the root DNS server. In the fifth step, the recursive caching DNS server sends an iterative query to a net server for www.dlb.net. In the sixth step, the net DNS server sends five things. It sends a non-secured referral for the authoritative name servers for the DLB zone. It sends an RR set of DNS key records for the net zone, made up of the net zone's public zone signing key and public key signing key. It sends an RR sig of the DNS key RR set, signed using the net zone's private key signing key. It sends a DS record for the DLB zone, which is the hash digest fingerprint of the DLB zone's public key signing key. And it sends an RR sig of the DS record, signed using the net zone's private zone signing key. In the seventh step, the recursive caching DNS server does three things. It verifies the net zone's DNS key RR set by successfully decrypting the RR set's RR sig using the net zone's public key signing key. It verifies the net zone's DS record for the DLB zone by successfully decrypting the record's RR sig using the net zone's public zone signing key. And it verifies the net zone by comparing the hash digest fingerprint of the net zone's public key signing key from the net zone with the previously obtained DS record from the root zone for the net zone. In the eighth step, the recursive caching DNS server sends an iterative query to a DLB server for www.dlb.net. In the ninth step, the DLB DNS server sends four things. It sends an RR set of DNS key records for the DLB zone, made up of the DLB zone's public zone signing key and public key signing key. It sends an RR sig of the DNS key RR set, signed using the DLB zone's private key signing key. It sends an ARR set for the DLB zone, and it sends an RR sig of the ARR set, signed using the DLB zone's private zone signing key. In the tenth step, the recursive caching DNS server does three things. It verifies the DLB zone's DNS key RR set by successfully decrypting the RR set's RR sig using the DLB zone's public key signing key. It verifies the DLB zone's ARR set by successfully decrypting the RR set's RR sig using the DLB zone's public zone signing key. And it verifies the DLB zone by comparing the hash digest fingerprint of the DLB zone's public key signing key from the DLB zone with the previously obtained DS record from the net zone for the DLB zone. In step 11, the recursive caching DNS server responds to the original client with the IP address of www.dlb.net. And finally, step 12, the client interacts with the web server www.dlb.net. Setting up DNSSEC. Some hosting services are providing GUI systems for you to implement DNSSEC for your hosted domain's zones, but they're still kludgy. Other hosting services will sign your domain zone for you and send its fingerprint, the hash digest of your domain zone's public key signing key, to your parent registrar on your behalf. If you manage your own domain zone and servers, you can use utilities like ZoneSigner to generate your keys and sign your domain zone. You then send your public key signing key fingerprint to your parent registrar. See my blog for more information. Key rollover. Key signing keys should be replaced yearly. Zone signing keys should be replaced quarterly. This is because zone signing keys are used more often and thus create more cipher examples for cryptographic analysis. Verifying DNSSEC infrastructure, server side. Sandia National Labs in Albuquerque, New Mexico and Livermore, California has written a free tool called DNSViz, 
which can be used to evaluate the DNSSEC status of a given zone. The tool is simple to use and includes a complete legend. Here we see the DNS viz analysis of the Daniel L. Benway.net zone. The black squares or rectangles are DNS domains zones. Here we see the root zone, the net zone, and the Daniel L. Benway zone. Ovals are DNS key records or DS records. Gray ovals are key signing keys. White ovals are zone signing keys or DS records. Rounded rectangles are resource record sets. In the root, you can see the key signing key is a double oval, meaning that it is the trust anchor of DNSSEC. The key signing key secures itself and its zone's zone signing keys. The zone signing key secures the DS record for the net zone, which is a fingerprint of the net zone's public key signing key. The turquoise arrow from the root zone to the net zone indicates that DNSSEC secures the net zone. The black arrow from the net zone to the Daniel L. Benway zone indicates that DNSSEC does not secure the Daniel L. Benway zone. Verifying DNSSEC from your browser, client side. Here we see that www.nic.cz makes snap ins for IE, Chrome, and Firefox, which will indicate the DNSSEC status of zones visited by those browsers. Secure zones are indicated by a white key in a green square. Note that in the IE window, the session is HTTP, not HTTPS, but the zone itself is DNSSEC verified. Wrapping up, I have a huge list of references for this tutorial, so please visit my blog for more information. Thank you for watching this DNSSEC tutorial. If you'd like to contact me, please visit my blog, www.danielelbenway.net. Thanks again.